That is Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, and it's sold out for the match between the Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys, obviously, the home team with their record of 11 and 1, and the Rams 10, 3 and 1. 71 degrees is the game time temperature, and this, of course, is always a very attractive place to be. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall, and this is Tom Brookshire. And we're just so excited about <laughs> bat and cleanup because this is the last of the four playoff games. We just expect this to be super. From here, it's on to Minnesota for one of the two teams. And the strange feeling I had talking to players, uh, you know, the last couple of days here in Dallas is that they would play it for nothing. And mm -hmm. in, a, in a world where we're very much uh, cognizant of what the big salaries are, that has nothing to do with it today, believe me. There is, of course, that always present factor of last year's humiliation in the NFC Championship game by the Cowboys over the Rams, 37 to 7. They say they don't they don't worry about that, but they do. Yeah, they do. The Rams have never won a playoff game on the road, uh, and they must love the Coliseum a lot, but what they don't like probably is a foreign turfs and things. Now, this is a rug. This is an artificial rug here at Texas Stadium, and I'll tell you, the Rams just don't play well when they're off natural grass. It'll be interesting to see. You know, Tom, there's one very unusual statistic that you pointed out to me this morning. The fact, uh, the difference in the effectiveness of the two Ram running backs, Lawrence McCutcheon and John Capoletti, on artificial turf. Right now, let's go back to Brent Musburger. All okay. right, Pat and Tommy, thank you very much. I want to update that story that I touched on briefly. There is the plane that crashed into Metropolitan Stadium in Baltimore 10 minutes after the conclusion of the Baltimore Colts loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the first reports are no casualties. The stadium already had been emptied out, so the crowd was on its way home. We're checking on the pilot, and we're going to also find out exactly how many passengers he had on that plane. And again, that happened about 10 minutes after the Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the Baltimore Colts 40-14. We'll update that story now at halftime. Right now, let's go back to Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire. All right, Brent, thank you very much. Uh, we'll keep you apprised of what happens as soon as we have more information about that plane crash. Right now, we're going to meet the starting lineup for the Los Angeles Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. The Rams, the visiting team, of course, will be first. Sure makes you realize that pro football is more than just a football game now. It is really total Americana, isn't it? And here we go with the Ram defense. And this is a guy many of us think should be all pro. This is number 90, Larry Brooks. And what a year he's had. People have to double him. Therefore, Merlin Olsen and other people get away with a lot of things in the line of scrimmage. And next, of course, the great one, Merlin Olson, who has announced that he'll retire. Isn't that what he said to you yesterday? Yes, and he'll probably come up to the television booth, and he's in his 208th game. Incredible. A rather loose and free <laughs> spirit is number 89, Fred Dreyer, the right defensive end. A great pass rusher and quite an interesting fellow. <laughs> and that is putting it mildly. The other defensive end, number 85, a guy who likes to hunt. And a guy who likes to track down quarterbacks, too. Jack Scary. Youngblood. Scary is about the best way to say that about Youngblood. And the linebackers would be next. Youngblood still jogging out between those Dallas cheerleaders, and I bet he doesn't even see them. Here is Isaiah Robertson. Could play anywhere on a pro football team from tight end to quarterback. What an athlete. Great speed for a linebacker. And, of course, the Rams have a good crew behind that defensive line. The Hacksaw, Jack Reynolds, number 64. He'll be in the middle. You've got to have a hard nose, and the Rams really have one. He looks serious about it, doesn't he? Always. On the other side, this is Jim Youngblood, number 53. He took the place of Rick Kay. No and relation. Kay went out with a, with a knee injury. No relation, as you almost said. But also scary. Right. Monty Jackson and the two Ram cornerbacks have had super years. Number 28 is Monty Jackson. Ten interceptions playing corner. He's only five foot eleven. At the other corner is number 49, Rod Perry. Defensive back out of Colorado, I guess where all good defensive backs come from. There have been some great ones from there. <laughs> One named Brookshire. Here is Dave Elmendorf. Great baseball player at Texas A&M, and no slouch is a football player. Smart. And the other guy who sort of ties things together is number 48, Bill Simpson of Michigan State. He with the red beard and the serious face. And makes the big interception. He's a key man on the defensive team for the Rams. And the guy who has done such an outstanding job leading the rest of that team is Chuck Knox. And you look at the rest of the Los Angeles Rams of Carol Rosenblum. 
44 wins in four seasons. An average of 11 per for the man you see right there. And what a fine gentleman he is. And speaking of fine gentlemen, let's go meet some of the Dallas Cowboys, the offensive unit. Big John Fitzgerald, number 62. And he starts every play. Don't forget that. The shotgun means he's got to snap it. And you might watch that as the afternoon progresses because he does it with one hand and does it blind without looking. Here is number 70, the great right tackle, Rayfield Wright, who came up as a tight end. An earth mover. The other tackle, the veteran from Oklahoma, number 73, Ralph Neely. Neely against Fred Dreyer. Great match. You might see Neely in motion a couple of times today, by the way. From Stanford, number 61, Blaine Nye. He says everybody recognizes him, but nobody cares. <laughs> we care. The other guy, uh, the other guard, number 68, second-year man Herbert Scott. He and Burton Wallace, number 66, will alternate, and they'll bring in the plays from Tom Landry. And they can block, and they can pull for sweeps. Off a good year, number 89, Billy Joe Dupree. A deep threat and a good blocker as well. Gives the team everything he's got, all the time. Billy Joe, 6'4", 230. At wide receiver, number 83 is Golden Richard. The fastest of all Cowboys, but he's got a hamstring. Butch Johnson will be in there if Golden can't go 100%. Looks like he's ready. He almost jumped to midfield. A clutch man, number 88. Drew Pearson. Drew Pearson does not put stickum on his hands. For you young players, remember that. He uses what the good Lord gave him. And he did well by Drew Pearson. Here is number 44, one of the running backs, Robert Newhouse. Expect to see him on a few screen passes and always under a pile. Newhouse from Houston. The other starting running back is Preston Pearson, the basketball player. And he's been missed more than any other Cowboy, perhaps with his injury to the thigh this year. Who will ever forget the game he had in the NFC Championship last year against Los Angeles. And the quarterback, Roger Staubach, number 12, who have started off this season as well as anybody ever has at that position. A 10th round draft choice in 1964. And one of the great credits to this game of football, number 12. And there is Tom Landry and the rest of the Dallas Cowboy football team. Two great organizations, the Rams and the Cowboys, and two outstanding football teams. There is Pat Hayden, the starting quarterback for Los Angeles. He's got to be the fellow that puts together a great offense, and as Chuck Knox said, it really doesn't make any difference because we have three great quarterbacks that can handle a very fine offensive machine, and it just so happens this young man has put it all together for him right when they need it now. What did he tell you yesterday about his knee? He said it didn't hurt him at all. The only thing that hurt him was when they put the arthroscope in there to see that it was all right. And that gave him more pain than the injury itself. So the Rhodes Scholar will start at quarterback for the Rams. And the former Annapolis Navy Heisman Trophy winner goes for the Cowboys. And here come the captain. The referee is Fred Silva. And when he gets ready to toss that coin and tell the captains what's going to happen, we'll switch down and hear what he has to say. This is a live moment, by the way. You're going to share it right with them. Here All right, captains, this is your coin. Heads, tails. It's heads here, tails here. Who's going to call it, please? In the air? Tails. Tails is called. Heads is thrown. What ball? Where you're standing. <laughs> Toss is here. We'll receive. Okay, okay. You heard the Dallas contingent say, we want the football. And even the, the toss of the coin was important. Did you see the Dallas guys clap because they won the toss? I've never seen that before. Even the coin looked excited. <laughs> More from Texas Stadium as you look now at Tom Landry, and we'll be back for this good one in just a minute. The all-new CBS Sports Spectacular premieres Saturday, January 8th with Nadia Comaneci of Romania, winner of three gold medals at the Olympics in Montreal, competing for the first time since then against Nelly Kim of the Soviet Union and the Chinichi Cup from Japan. That's the premiere of the all-new CBS Sports Spectacular Saturday, January 8th. 
Dallas cheerleaders are ready. This is Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. Tom Dempsey is about ready to kick off. And deep for Dallas, Jim Jensen, number 37, and Butch Johnson, number 86. Tom Dempsey, number 10, to kick it off for Los Angeles. Off the side a little bit, Johnson hustling to get up to it at the 14-yard line. And now he heads back to the middle. Butch Johnson almost lost the football and did lose the football. It belongs to Dallas. Johnson was the last man with possession. Wow. The main thing is control of the fumbled ball. And the Rams obviously thought they had control. But Dallas gets the hog bladder back right now. What a way to start the game. Watch it again. A little bit of trouble getting it underway, and then Butch cuts it straight up, and he's holding the ball so loosely. The ball wasn't hit, but his body swung him around. Cullen Bryant was the last guy in Ram colors who had a shot at it, but Johnson was the last man with a possession. So it's Dallas first down at their own 43. Right after it. Green pass to Pearson. And Isaiah Robertson was right there with it. Good play. First play of the game. As we said, the Cowboys are not noted for points in the first period, but they know they've got to get them against the Rams. And they have really missed Preston Pearson. The one lone cowboy, I guess, that didn't come up through the ranks. They picked him up when he was waved by Pittsburgh and looked like he was going through the trees and found a home here. Scott Laidlaw is one of the running backs as Newhouse went out. Along with Richard. Back to Laidlaw. Nothing doing. Isaiah Robertson again and Fred Dreyer. The only reason that there is a shotgun or a spread, as Tom Landry calls it, with Roger Staubach, is because if everybody knows I've got a pass, Landry feels we might as well be in something that gives my quarterback a fraction of a second to look over the field and pick his own place. And that's what Roger's been doing rather well from the shotgun. It's going to be third and five, and perhaps we'll get our first look at it right here. Here we go. Brett Dreyer put the heat on Roger, knocked him down just as he let it go. Rod Perry on the coverage, and it looks like the Cowboys are going to have to punt. Danny White, of course, is their punter. And that wasn't thrown away. That was just thrown badly. Deep for the Rams will be Cullen Bryant and Jim Bertelson. Bertelson, 45, at the right side of your picture. Cullen Bryant, the other. Cullen's had a good year running back both kickoffs and punts. Bryant averages 11 yards a return, which is just short of incredible in this league these days. Danny White, the punter, is also the backup quarterback. Oh, what a shot this is. And into the end zone. They couldn't quite catch up with it. He rooted that one about 65 yards in the air. This telecast, presented by authority of the National Football League, is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast really used to this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is created. First down for the Rams and their quarterback, Pat Hayden. And Pat Hayden has never taken up anything that he didn't do extremely well, whether it's Brooks passing a football or throwing a frisbee. Capaletti for about six. The boys out of bounds on the far side of the field by Cliff Harris. Remember, the first play is the big play offensively for the Rams. They do not win it up, end up third and eight. They want to be about third and two. Capaletti gets a good block from Mack and dips outside, and Capaletti has tailed off a little bit after a great start early in the year. Ram offensive line has France and John Williams at the tackle. Mack Kara, the guards, and Rich Saul is the center. Capaletti again. Stopped by Bob Brunick. Not quite enough for a Los Angeles first down. Or perhaps it is. Yes, it is. Indication by Fred Silva. And when they put it down, he got to the 30. So, exactly the 30. And so the Rams do not face the nickel defense when they bring in the perhaps the best athletes they've got, those young fellows off the bench. And 
The Rams feel if they can face the regular 11 on the line of scrimmage, they can play against this team. Ram wide receivers are Jesse and Jackson, and they're both split to the right. McCutcheon. R.S. McCutcheon with trouble from Harvey Martin after he got about two. And Charlie Waters was really forcing quickly. Number 41 was across the line of scrimmage before the ball was in McCutcheon's hand. The Dallas defense right now has Martin and Ed Jones at the ends. Larry Cole is one tackle and Jethro Pugh is the other. Linebackers are Jordan Brunig and D.D. Lewis. Gapoletti again. Chased by Martin and down by Martin. Back to the line of scrimmage. Back to the 30. It's hard to run outside Harvey Martin. It's actually hard to run inside Harvey Martin. But watch when they try to get out. You see McCutcheon getting help from Klein on the outside man, and Harvey just beat his block. They have made the substitutions that Tom was talking about a minute ago, that nickel defense. They bring in Henderson, Hughes, Kyle, and Randy White. And they change the front. The quarterback doesn't know what he's going to see until he's back. Third down for the Rams. I think Larry Cole was the first guy there. Back number 45 for the Dallas Cowboys. And watch the young quarterback try to figure out what kind of a defense they've got on the underside. And he doesn't get it done in time, does he? And from the backside comes Harvey and Larry from the middle. Super rush by Larry Cole. He beat a triple team. <laughs> Rusty Jackson back deep for the Rams now to punt their first of the day. Butch Johnson would be deep for Dallas. Good kick. Ooh. Returnable, but he had to wait a long time. Butch straight ahead. Got away from a couple. Look out. Butch Johnson still on his feet. To the 35, to the 30, and down. He ran out of gas finally. Butch Johnson. What a super return. two touchdown passes the last two weeks in a row. He's out of California Riverside. And watch this return. Here's a good move. Now watch Cullen Bryant, number 32, almost take his head off. And now Rod Phillips comes over after Butch has run out of gas and puts him down. He got all the way in deep in the Ram territory to the 28. Dallas has a good spot. And the event you might not know, Pittsburgh beat Baltimore 40 to 14 this afternoon. So the goal gets open. And the winner of this contest goes to Minnesota next week. And don't forget, Roger Staubach is a great playoff quarterback. He's been there 10 times before and won seven of them. He has a first down now at the Ram 28. And he gets to Pearson. Pearson inside the 25 to the 24. Bill Simpson came up, along with help from Isaiah Robertson. Pearson has that will of the wisp way of running that that makes you think that he has no hurry, no problems at all with time to get into the hole. And a good reacting defense once in a while will allow some holes to open up a fraction of a second later if you don't force it. And Preston never seems to force. Right now, Preston is out, and number 21, Doug Dennison, has taken his place. Second and six. <laughs> in real trouble and the Rams really converged on him Larry Brooks Olsen Dreyer and Youngblood all four of them the Rams defensive line Patrick didn't even look at the fake watch Larry right over the center now take a double team block and split it and come right on Hacksaw Reynolds the middle linebacker fired but they didn't care if the running back had the ball or not so a third down coming up Pearson is back in. Wade Law is the fullback. Drew Pearson goes to the right. Golden Richards splits to the left. And out of shift. Overthrown, intended for Billy Joe Dupree. 
flag is down back at the 40-yard line. Dave Elmendorf was the nearest ram. There was some holding by the offensive Dallas Cowboys, and the ball again was thrown a ton over the receiver. Here it is now. The gun is good. It's early. But even B.J. at 6'5", Dupree couldn't get near it. It was a short hopper by the cornerback. Again, Fred Silva is the referee. I'll tell you about the rest of his crew in just a minute, but he'll talk to us first. The options with the Rams. Right. Seventy-three offense holding. Ralph Neely. Right. Now remember the little shuttle pass that Dallas used so effectively in that playoff game a year ago when Roger shuttles it inside to a, a running back from the shotgun. The Rams have been worried about that thing all year, and I just have a feeling if it's tried, it's going to backfire. The Rams are worried about it so much, in fact, that they put it in their own <laughs> offense. Third down from the shotgun. Here we go. Drawback ball slipped out of his hand. Drew Pearson is the intended receiver. Knocked away by Elmendorf. Center fielder. Number 42 played it perfectly. He laid off the man and went over and, and swats a wounded duck right out of bounds. This ball is thrown, and it, it never even tailed. It just fluttered all the way. Watch the flutter pass. You won't see it from that spot, but Elmendorf went about 16 yards as the ball was in the air. Keep in mind that Dallas, after that punt return by Butch Johnson, had a first down at the Ram 28, and they got nothing. Danny White is in the punt, or is lined up in punt formation, I should say, because he threw a pass for a clutch first down earlier this year and for the corner. Danny Barnes is down there with Henderson, and they kill it, I think, at the one-yard line. What a play by Thomas Henderson. And what a call by the official, and he was right there. In fact, watch this shot, Pat. Watch 56. It's a spike. And the ball stayed inbound. Next Saturday on Christmas Day at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents an NBA shootout when Artis Gilmore leads the Chicago Bulls against the Kansas City Kings with Sam Lacey and Ron Boone. That's Chicago taking on Kansas City at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Christmas Day. The Los Angeles offensive unit deep in its own end zone. And take a look at how it happened. <laughs> the thing's supposed to bounce in funny ways, didn't it? Looks like it should be humming. Thomas Henderson knocked the ball down just as it got to the corner of the playing field. And it's Graham first and ten at their own one. Just over nine minutes left in the first period. Pat Hayden with a quarterback sneak. Got a little room for himself. Pat, you know, pro football teams that really chart themselves have said that you won't go 99 yards probably all year, maybe once or twice, and get points at the other end. And this will be a tremendous test for this Ram offense to keep the ball and not get hurt deep in their own territory. Their defensive unit did the job for them in the previous series. And now the offense has the challenge. Right. Right. Touch it. Maybe one. Maybe, but he earned it. Harvey Martin to the left of your screen. Just keep your eye on 79. That's Leroy setting up in the hole. Mack blocks him. That is a wall. You're right about Harvey. It's hard to run outside, inside. It's hard to throw when he's playing defense. He wants to play one more game, at least. Third and five. And again, it's the Dallas defense. Mark Washington is the guy who made the tackle. Number 46. And notice that the Los Angeles Rams did not try to throw against that flex defense this time. And it's probably a good thing. They settled for the punt formation. And man, there's a lot of gang pursuit going on by the Cowboys. A whole bunch of folks over there. Rusty Jackson. Deep in the Ram end zone. A rookie. A lot of pressure. 
aggressive on a guy who snaps the ball too. In this case, it's Jack Reynolds. They're going to have to take a timeout. Almost over his head. Almost blocked. What a good kick by Jackson. What a punt. Butch Johnson signaled for a fair catch back at the 40. There are two flags down. Too much time trying to get the punt off. Now you say snap it quick if you're number nine. <laughs> they had a lot of trouble lining up and getting in a correct formation, and now they've tightened up a little bit more. Dallas does not try to block this one. Not as good a kick, and Johnson goes up with a fair catch signal at the Ram 45. On New Year's Day, CBS Sports presents the prestigious Cotton Bowl with the undefeated Maryland Terrapins taking on the Southwest Conference co-champion Houston Cougars. On January the 2nd at 3 p.m., we'll present the always popular Sun Bowl, pitting 10th-ranked Texas A&M against the Florida Gators, a member of the Southeastern Conference and a very explosive team. You know, look, there's Tom Landry on the sidelines, a percentage maneuver that time to destroy the young man's punting concentration and then get the fair catch and have the ball going in again. Just inside the Ram 45, the Cowboy have a first down. Cowboys have a first down. Newhouse broke a couple, struggles to the 40. Isaiah Robertson again on the tackle. One of the Dallas fans, uh, I guess, not too happy about things at the moment. What is the bucking on that last play? Let's watch this now. This is the outside play. They keep Dreyer inside. Neely does a pretty good job with the Apache toe holder. <laughs> Roger is one for three, but that was that little slip screen affair the very first time he threw it. Second and six, the four-yard pickup by Newhouse. Cole and Richards. Roger threw it high. Richards had to get airborne, and Bill Simpson cut him down. And Roger almost got Golden Richards uh, hurt. The ball was thrown high and makes the receiver very vulnerable right at the moment when Jackson was going to stick him right in the ribs. I think Golden was aware of that. I think Golden might have uh, felt the presence of the Ram defense. Watch the young cornerback, and the ball's thrown up there. Boy, a receiver hates to be there. Cover up the ribs. So it'll be third down now for Dallas. And they go to the shotgun. Rams don't blitz. Staubach fires to Pearson. He's got a first down. This is Preston Pearson. The closest Ram again was Simpson. His 24th reception, and we're trying to figure out where 26 came from. Watch this now. He's a, I told you he's slippery. I'm telling you, Simpson's off of him by six yards. And you always wonder where he came from or where he's going and how he's going to get there. But he always seems to. <laughs> It'll be a first down for Dallas. Five and a half minutes left first period. Ball on the 27-yard line. An inside handoff to Newhouse. Did not fool Larry Brooks. Oh, a misdirection that... I imagine Newhouse will go back and ask Roger if he's mad. I'll tell you, Larry Brooks is something. He uh, he demands double blocking by the offense. It allows Burrow and Olsen to have a little bit of freedom and be able to use the stunts, but number 9-0 is something else. Chuck Knox looking on. That's Ron Jaworski. One of the three ran quarterbacks next to the coach. Second and nine. Headed for Golden Richards. It was open, but again, the pass was not there. And the blitz was on. And the Rams got uh, pretty good lanes that time for the blitz. They're getting very quickly into the lanes. And that's the secret of a blitz. John Landry knows that. You've got to steal them off. If you can catch the team blitzing, uh, you might have some scratching on defense. But that time, Roger had a problem. Scott Laidlaw checks in, number 35. A good pass receiver coming out of the backfield. Roger is two for six now. Billy Joe Dupree coming out to the left. Golden Richards also out to the left. A good rush. Dahlbach got tangled up with Blaine Nye, but the Rams put on the pressure. Mr. Merlin Olsen, number 74, okay? 
16 years, this guy out of the mountain country of Utah had just been doing it. Now watch number 74 to the left center of your screen. He locks up with Blaine Nye, who's a super offensive guard. Makes this move. Roger is a heck of an athlete, right? Now watch what happens. They cut him off there. Watch where number 74 comes from. 16 years of it. Now, Freeman Herrera. A remarkable field goal percentage, 78%. This one from 44 yards out. Could be. And he got it. The 19th field goal in 24 shots. Got a little man from Guadalajara. Herrera over talking with Mike Ditka, and he's had one heck of a year, and he puts the Cowboys on top in this playoff game. Seven plays, 44-yard field goal by Herrera. Makes the Cowboys three. The Rams nothing with four minutes and two seconds left to play in the first period. They had two shots and got three points, finally. You need more than that. Herrera, Cullen Bryant in the middle in the back for the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to watch Thomas Henderson. It'll be Bryant. It's a good kick. Chases him about a yard deep into his own end zone. And here comes Big Cullen Bryant. Oh. And big he is, about 230. Came out of Colorado at about 190, and somewhere the metabolism changed into that. He pinch presses about 400, and he's the outstanding kickoff return guy of the entire league this year. And the guy who made the tackle might be just as strong as he is. There's Randy White. Yeah, that's got to be a real stand-up. Emotions near the boiling point tomorrow as the pregnant Summer Johnson makes a fateful decision on executive sweep. The drama begins at 10, 9 central time here on CBS. Bob Klein in motion. Lawrence McCutcheon back to the weak side is cut down. Leroy Jordan. Aha, pretty nice little play. The tight end goes in motion. So that becomes the weak side of the formation. The linebacker now, Brunig, should move in. Instead, he moves out. Now, he's got to cover outside, but not that far. And Capaletti wedges him out to the sidelines. And number 30, don't give him too much room. McCutcheon, over 1,000 yards again this year. Here comes Klein in motion. We're going to change his sides, I guess. Charlie Waters comes with him. Waters got pinched inside. A flag goes down. McCutcheon runs into Gregory. Benny Barnes forced him back inside like offensive holding Charlie Waters got up trying to make the call for the officials I'll tell you uh, Hera the big offensive guard ran into Benny Barnes and a defensive secondary man got the best of the shot they really exchanged on the line of scrimmage Let's see what Fred Silva has to say about this violation Leroy's going to help him or make sure he knows what he's talking about it's going to seem strange to be doing a football game without saying Merlin Olsen and maybe Leroy Jordan, isn't it? It's strange for them, too. You get used to the life. Let's hear what this call is and who they caught. 81 offense, flipping, second down. Yeah, 81, of course, is Jesse. The flanker trying to do a job. Let's watch this now. Watch the left part of your screen. See where 81 comes from. Now, there is the action I told you, 31 against 60. Flag comes right in and is caught by Lawrence McCutcheon. <laughs> well, the Rams have a second and 20 to go now. Three minutes, nine seconds left first period. Cowboys three, Rams nothing. Cat Hayden, the Los Angeles quarterback, about to throw his first pass. Or try to. Ed Jones with the sack and a flag goes down. Face mask. I believe too tall when he wrapped around, came down with the helmet. And I'll tell you, he looked up and saw the official looking at him, and he just threw up his hand. Watch 72. You can't miss him. He's six foot nine. The only guy in America that can put the star on top of his Christmas tree without any problem. Watch this. Watch the move. Hayden ducks under. And is thrown down and tied in about seven seconds. The official is right there with it. And it's an automatic first down. Ball still goes back to the 15-yard line. That's where the violation was. But it's now first down. Flying again. 
again moves. Capilouti runs. This time now, D.D. Lewis played the run that we saw Bruni have a little problem with earlier. Now, Klein goes in motion to the top of your screen, so he's gone. So now this is toward the weak side of the formation. Here's that flex defense that Irv Cross and Landry were talking about, and Leroy comes right in on cue. And D.D. Lewis stopped the play inside, and there was nowhere to go. Jordan, while sitting down, made that last tackle with help from Cliff Harris. Pat Hayden now on second down. Looking to throw. Not much of any place to go. Bill Gregory and Harvey Martin were the two Dallas Cowboy players who made the hits on Hayden. Young man's having trouble getting the ball off, and he can pass. Now, let's see how 79 gets into it. I don't know how he comes from the other side of the line. He's in the right part of your screen, bouncing off McCutcheon and Mack, and almost got a real good shot at Pat Hayden. That would be a dangerous way to spend this Sunday afternoon. And now on third and five, the Cowboys make those sophisticated defensive changes. Randy White is lined up as a lineman in the position of the left tackle. Might watch him go. Hayden. This one's caught by Harold Jackson. Pretty good throw. Good blocking up front. And that's the one the young man needed to air it out a little bit. Here's Harold Jackson. He weighs 174 pounds, dripping wet. And as we've said before, he doesn't even make prints. And on this artificial surface, he doesn't even make a sound. He's so quick. Let's watch the blocking. There's Randy White, Pat talked about right in the center of the screen. They got him on the line of scrimmage. Not too much penetration. He could see what was happening, and he delivers. They handled him well, and he got the first down completion. 55 seconds left first period. Still Dallas three. Los Angeles nothing. Wooden fakes the draw and sets up the screen to Capoletti. Jordan pushed him out of bounds, but it's another Ram first down. Remember, the Ram quarterback is getting the signals waved to him from the sidelines, which in turn are coming from upstairs. And what looks to me uh, and you like a simple scratching of the neck or something by the coaches tells the young man Hayden what kind of a play and in really in detail what's going to happen. There is the number one cowboy rooter. He probably just got out of jail in time to make the game. <laughs> He's in good company. <laughs> First down. Capoletti to the weak side. Charlie Waters got away from the block and finally tied him up. But a pretty good effort by Capoletti. Got about three. There are the signals. Going to Pat Hayden. And he might not even be the one giving them sometimes. They get pretty clever about how they do it. Looks like he was making a peace proposal. Chuck Knox says, uh, when answering a question of people pick up your signals, the opposition, he said, Sometimes we don't even pick up our own signal. <laughs> <laughs> Second and nine situation now. Aiden going for the bundle to Jackson, and he got it. Underthrown, he had to come back, and Benny Barnes forced him out of bounds. How many times have you seen the passes completed like that when they are underthrown? And the reason is there's so much speed that Benny Barnes is worrying about with Harold Jackson, like 4-3 speed for the 40, that the defensive back loses his perspective, and the quarterback gets a completion to Harold Jackson. That's the last play of the first quarter. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Oh, we're doing some good things these days. I appreciate it. <laughs> it is 3-0. Dallas over the Rams. You're looking at the first play about to unwind in the second period. The Rams on the move after that completion from Hayden to Jackson. Lawrence McCutcheon looking for some place to go. Well, on that cutback, he got some good yards. Stopped by D.D. Lewis. McCutcheon has the the great knack of being able to accelerate on the break. Few athletes have that kind of a smooth running gait. Uh, he's from Plainview, Texas, which might not endure him to the people here, but 
Well, I'll tell you one thing. He comes to play from the opening preseason game till whenever that last one is. Hayden's got his signal and has his play called. Second and six. Ball in the Dallas nine now. Inside the five. Wrapped up and pulled back. Harvey Martin and company. Helped by Larry Cole. Finally stopped him. Let's take a look at what it looks like in slow motion. Inside drive. Good block by Hare on the right side. On too tall Jones. And Capaletti manages to get pretty low. And as they say, he doesn't have any handles either. Look at Harvey and company working on it. They break the huddle and come up with third and two. Make it one. Make it two. <laughs> Hayden on a rollout. Scores for Los Angeles. Pat Hayden rolled into the end zone behind some good blocking. Big block by Lawrence McCutcheon, number 30. And remember, the quarterback is the extra runner. If he can run and get out of there alive, ooh, good block by McCutcheon. He's an extra person that the defense hasn't had a chance to defense. You're supposed to hand it off, they keep saying, and not take chances. Blocked by McCutcheon was on Aaron Kyle. Touchdown by Hayden. And now the extra point attempt by Dempsey. The winner of this will go to Minnesota to play the Vikings. They were so impressive yesterday. Extra point by Tom Dempsey is good, and the Rams with 13.34 left in the second period. Move on top. Scores Los Angeles 7, Dallas 3. The all-new CBS Sports Spectacular premieres Saturday, January 8th with Nadia Comaneci of Romania, winner of three gold medals at the Olympics in Montreal, competing for the first time since then against Nelly Kim of the Soviet Union and the Chinichi Cup from Japan. That's the premiere of the all-new CBS Sports Spectacular Saturday, January 8th. The big play in that drive was the pass from Hayden to Jackson. And then Pat Hayden rolled into the end zone for the touchdown. Tom Dempsey to kick off. Line drive kickoff fielded by Butch Johnson at the 11. Butch again has got some good yardage. Butch Johnson comes all the way out to the 32. He's tackled by Steve Priest. A Cowboy offensive unit trots on the field. Down by 7 to 3. And Roger is now 2 for 6 for 17 yards. You might recall that he had an awful time throwing against the Washington Redskins a week ago. And Roger has to set the tempo for this offensive team. There is no doubt about it. At the 32. A pitch back to Pearson. He had Neely out in front, but he only managed a couple. Stopped by Isaiah Robertson again. Rogers wondering because he got a good block from his flanker Pearson who came back and yet they still strung it out and there were a lot of Rams there. Oh it's a team game. You don't no longer pick on the corners of the Los Angeles Rams. Young Perry and Jackson are extremely adequate if not really superior. Second and eight. was good this time thrown over Pearson's head but that was catchable wow Pearson couldn't believe it watch this and it goes right on through like maybe Preston Pearson has something on his hands other than fingers pretty good pass blocking too watch Freddie Dreyer now the vroom vroom man Good pass rusher. He and Neely. It's a solo action now. Neely keeping him in front of him legally and then burying him. Here's a shotgun by Dallas as Laidlaw came back in motion and stays to block. Ball back by Olsen. The 
because of Larry Brooks. Merlin and Brooks. Brooks chased Roger back right to number 74. Watch this. Watch the two right. Right center and left center of your screen. Number 90 and 74. There he cuts him off. Gets rid of the blocker. Like a chorus line. The two tackles converge. And Olsen picked up the sack. Danny White is deep. Did a couple of really spectacular punts already. This one's not too shabby either. High kick. Colin Bryant fields and Colin Henderson. What a job he does. Hollywood Henderson, number 56. A flag is down. It's going to be against the Cowboys, and I think White will have to come back and do that again. There's the hit by Henderson. Red Silva going back to the line of scrimmage. The umpire, by the way, is Ralph Moorcroft. Headlinesman Al Sabato. The line judge is Don Orr. Back judge Bob Rice. The field judge is Fritz Graff. And the alternate is Gordon McCarter. Let's hear who did it. It might have been number 56. Kicking team downfield on the punt. Fourth down. The whole team was downfield illegally. <laughs> Look at that group. Randy White. They're just standing on the street corner waiting for something to happen, huh? There's Chuck Knox. His team leads 7 to 3 now. And we have 12 43 left, second period. Danny White to punt again. Cullen Bryant and Jim Bertelson deep. This one not quite so good. Bryant feels it. Henderson overran the play that time. He gets back into Dallas territory to the 47. Jay Salvi made the tackle. And so the Rams will take it over in pretty good shape. They're going to mark the ball at about the 45. Ram ball at the Dallas 47. The Rams have never won a playoff game on the road. Right now they lead this one seven to three. They've run 21 plays to eight or to 17 for Dallas. This is Lawrence McCutcheon. Had a pretty good hold, but stumbled, and Leroy Jordan made sure he stayed down. Boy, Doug France, that monstrous offensive left tackle, really drops Larry Cole. Watch the left part of your screen. 77 will block down on 63 and just do a job. Klein gets his block. A little bit of uh, an opening there in that Dallas defense, I'll tell you. Leroy Jordan came over and made the seal. Second down and seven yards to go now for Pat Hayden's offensive unit. McCutcheon's going to try the same spot. Again, he got some good yardage. Got a good hold. Got good blocking up front. Jack Youngblood on the sideline, the defensive end. Cliff Harris and Charlie Waters, the two safety men, converged to make that last tackle. Very important that you mention that he's resting because the Dallas defense has been on the field an awful lot of the time already. Ball of the Dallas 39 now. Rams seven, Cowboys three. and rolled. Ooh, not quite. Leroy Jordan. Pretty good looking play that just didn't pan out because Leroy, one of the great tacklers, just zeroed in on the quarterback and drilled him. To the top of the screen now are Jesse and Jackson, so this is definitely the weak side, and Harvey Martin just inside a little bit. Watch Leroy's tackle. Feet apart. Solid. Rusty Jackson is number nine for the Rams, the punter. Butch Johnson is deep for Dallas. Rams still shuffling around. And now they tighten up. They think Dallas is going to try to block it. High kick by Jackson. Bounces at the 15 and comes out of bounds at the 17. 
Beginning Sunday, January the 16th, the challenge of the sexes returns with all sorts of new and exciting challengers from swimming to skydiving. We have super hustler Bobby Riggs taking on tennis great Althea Gibson and much, much more. And all that excitement begins Sunday, January the 16th, on the challenge of the sexes. Hello. Bob Klein. Telling them what time you'll be home tonight. Calling long distance, right? The pitch out is to Pearson. This time, he got airborne and was tackled by Dave Elmendorf. Larry Brooks came over to help out. Pretty good block by Butch Johnson, the, the rookie receiver. He cracked back and got a pretty good block on Youngblood and made the play as effective as it was. Watch the left lower part of your screen. 85's fighting the block that's been set up for him. Butch Johnson stayed with him pretty well for a, a receiver type. Youngblood does get back in. Here's Billy B.J. Dupree. Dupree, huh? Cuts off Isaiah Robertson. Second and six. And again, Youngblood had him. Just under. Youngblood was in the backfield and had him. Fred Dreyer came all the way from the other side to finally take him. Can you react too quickly? Watch the right part of your screen, left part of your screen. But Blaine Nye misses the block. Youngblood made the move so quickly. And there's old Slippery again. It'll be third down. Tom Landry, as most of you know, I'm sure, calls all the plays for the Cowboys. But they shuffle players back and forth. They don't do it like the Rams. Pearson. And that is a Dallas first down. Isaiah Robertson made the tackle of the Cowboys. Convert on third down. Only Rogers' third completion, but a big one on short yardage. And Pearson just again comes from nowhere. Boy, you think the Cowboys haven't missed this fella. Pittsburgh might have missed this fella too. He's been gone a while. Didn't seem like they missed anybody for the last few games. They Not destroyed on defense. Baltimore today. That's right. First down, the ball at their own 31. Outside, this is two two. And another Dallas first down. Pushed out of bounds by Rod Perry. Drew Pearson, the 185-pounder, maybe. Watch him, he beats double coverage. Inside now, Elmendorf was waiting. But the main thing that a receiver tries to do is make a double coverage into single coverage. He only worked against Monty Jackson. First down at their own 43. With eight minutes and ten seconds left before the half. It's first and ten. Roger. Behind Golden Richards. Rod Perry was the closest defender. I was in error. Actually, Roger's last completion to Drew Pearson was right in front of Rod Perry. And Perry almost came up with the interception then. Roger knows this is the toughest of all games for him but he loves playoff competition. On the Los Angeles bench, John Williams getting a breather. Big number 75 has done a heck of a job at right tackle. He's the smaller of the two offensive tackles. He's only about 255, six foot four and a half. Second and 10. Pitch back to Newhouse. Red Dreyer on a good pursuit. <laughs> Newhouse, old Stumpy, was really in a hurry. He's sort of a direct line runner. You get a lot of Newhouse when you tackle him, but handling him is another thing. Dreyer makes a pretty good play on that one. There he goes. Five foot ten. And a ton. That's Dan Reeves standing in front of him. And then, of course, there's Tom Landry now in the hat. Wearing glasses. I don't think I ever saw Tom wear glasses before. On third down. Starbuck drops deep. Laidlaw comes back with it. And tended for Billy Joe Dupree. He got a hand on it, but couldn't hold. Elmendorf was right with him. 
Boy, they both went together. It was almost a, a synchronized leap for the ball. Incredible. Let's take a look at this now and see what we see together from the L shotgun, as they say down here. Look at these two. Defensive players, 42. B.J. Dupree and he go together for it. And Danny White. And the rest of the Dallas punting unit come on now. He'll throw it. He'll run with it. And he's had two blocks. Cullen Bryant deep for the rain. Cullen will field it at the 17. Gets away from Benny Barnes, and they've got something set up. Cullen Bryant finally by Bob Brunig at Aaron Kyle. Boy, is he strong. Bryant just throws the first guy aside, and yes. yet he's got balance. He just rips right through the tacklers. There's Dave Elmendorf coming over as the Ram offensive unit goes on. Next Saturday on Christmas Day at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents an NBA shootout when Artis Gilmore leads the Chicago Bulls against the Kansas City Kings with Sam Lacey and Ron Boone. That's Chicago taking on Kansas City at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Christmas Day. It hasn't been a very good first half so far for Roger Staubach or the Cowboys shotgun. Have you ever heard a stadium this big, full of people this quiet? They're waiting for something to happen, and they're not sure what. About 65,000 on hand. The Rams lead it 7-3 with just over seven minutes to go before the half. Right, right, right. It's Lawrence McCutcheon hit almost as soon as he got it by Bill Gregory. McCutcheon, of course, one of the top running backs in all of pro football. And Gregory, one of those fellows you don't get a chance to hear about because of Harvey Martin and Too Tall and Leroy Jordan and Randy White, but I'll tell you, 77, when he gets a play, he and Larry Cole make each of those plays count. Mark Washington is number 46. Mel Renfro normally would be there. Mel has a bad knee, and they weren't sure. They had to watch him warm up to see if he'd be able to play. Second down situation coming up for Los Angeles now. And Hayden drops the pass. Safety valve out to McCutcheon. Turned out pretty well, didn't it? A ram first down. Good thing that young Hayden made the move that Chuck Knox wants him to. When you're in doubt and you're going to hit a flare back, do it early enough so you don't get a shot. Now watch the bottom part of your screen. Watch Harvey Martin and big Doug France. Each is 6'5". Now watch. Now France lets him go and watch Harvey just pull up at the last instant. Good time to early release it for young Hayden. McCutcheon, I told you, is full goal with the second step. Enough for a first down with six minutes and 17 seconds left before the half now. Rams on the move again. Hayden. They had a blitz on. He just throws it to Bob Klein. And big Bob Klein is met by Cliff Harris. Whoa. What a collision that what was. What a tackle by number 43. And Klein went backward but made the first down. Now watch Klein check out. He's the tight end. The blitz is to the right. D.D. Lewis comes, and Hayden is a very cool young man. Don't put him in that rookie classification. Not fair. Just dropped it off to a tight end who really gets <laughs> shocked. Still enough for a Ram first down in Dallas territory now at the 45. Block ticket away. Scores Los Angeles 7, the Dallas Cowboys 3. Straight ahead is John Capaletti. He surged for about four. Harvey Martin made the tackle. A couple of good Ram running backs. Speaking of running backs, we had a visitor before the game. Guy I hadn't seen in a long time. He used to play with the Colts. L.G. Dupree. Long gone Dupree came in. And now we're seeing the second generation. His kid over at Texas Tech right. is some kind of a football player. Also had a visit with Billy Bessel. Another pretty good one. I'd say. And Dwayne Thomas. On second down, here's one of the better ones. Lawrence McCutcheon. Leroy Jordan was the guy who made the initial contact. Let's take a look at the play. They pull the left tackle right out of your screen. Watch 77 will pull. Mack takes the inside. Good block on the outside, but good recovery. And a tough tackle not quite completed by Leroy Jordan. Dallas Finch 
And it's pretty quiet right now. Billy Joe Dupree looking on. The cheerleaders trying to get something going. Third and five for the Rams. And Hayden takes the draw play. Gets set. Fires to Jackson. Jackson slipped down on the artificial turf. Benny Barnes was close to him, but he lost his footing. Look at Harrell. It's amazing that the better traction on the artificial surface is something he slipped on. As I've said before, he's like Nureyev with the feet. Can't jump quite as high, but I mean, he can catch at the end of it. Rusty Jackson counting and seeing that he's got all 10 men in there with him. Dallas may be coming. At least they're going to try to make Rusty Jackson think they're coming. Got a bunch of guys up on the line. Now they shift around a little bit. Now it's blocked by Charlie Waters. Blocked it. And they scrambled around and tried to pick it up. It's going to be Dallas ball no matter who recovers it. Jay Salvi is the guy who got off the football. Let's well, we back. called it. Watch Waters. Let's take a look at what happened. The snap, let's check the snap first. Whoa, he had to feel it like a shortstop. Took two little pigeon steps. Number 41's already there. There's Jensen trying to help him. Big, big opportunity made by the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas first down in Ram territory. 4.05 left before the half, and from regular formation, Starbuck throws outside the Newhouse. Newhouse beat one tackler, Elmendorf. And finally went out of bounds. Watch the footwork on the sideline. All right, there's just no target when you try to tackle Newhouse. He's had the bad groin all year, but watch him slip under Elmendorf's tackle. And Elmendorf's a good tackler. He just sort of grew. He went out of bounds and still tried to run. Dallas fans hoping something will happen. It'll give them an opportunity to cheer. Five-yard pickup on that completion to Newhouse. It's second and five. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. The last of the playoff games. The other three teams are already decided. Here is Pearson straight ahead. Close to a first down. Elmendorf again had to make the tackle. Was there a hole, or did Preston Pearson just find something and go through somebody's legs? What's the left part of your screen? Mike Fanning being pinned. I don't know how he got through there. Close enough to measure for the first down. Dallas hasn't had too much, too much success against this Ram defensive unit. Not quite a first down for Pearson. Third and very short. Dennison. And Donovan come in. Pat Donovan comes in sometimes as a tight end. And he is letting the officials know right now that his number is 67, and he'll be lined up on the end. So he's eligible for a pass. Roger is 5 for 12 for 40 yards, but not really humming yet with the pass offense, and the Cowboys live by the pass. Third and short. Newhouse and Dennison, the running backs, and you'd have to guess Dennison. Dennison straight ahead, first down, Cowboys. There he goes. You can check the stats. He's no OJ, but I'll tell you something. He's had a great year for the Cowboys, particularly in close to the goal line. Pearson in motion, and Drew always goes in a hurry, which is excellent. Pretty good defensive play, and Dennison just got a lot of it on his own. So it'll be a Dallas first down with three minutes now left before the half. Dennison is out and Pearson is back in on first and ten. Pearson gets the call, the inside handoff, and Pearson breaks a couple and a couple more to the 20-yard line. Preston Pearson by Marty Jackson. Pearson's had the off year because of the injury. He's only actually had about 233 yards from scrimmage. But he gets there in a hurry, and watch him make Simpson miss. The old limp leg. That was a Chuck Foreman move. And watch what happened. Hacksaw Reynolds might have taken the false step, gets caught inside, and the traffic cut him down. Newhouse with that good block. Going to get the two-minute warning in just a second. 
They might get this play off, and they do. Pearson again, the fake. Oh, what a fake by Staubach. Butch Johnson made the catch at the two. I lost the ball. So did the defensive secondary. Watch Rogers stick it in. Not a great fake, but somebody took it. That's just a quick slant, and Butch Johnson is coming on very, very quickly. As you mentioned before, he caught a touchdown pass in each of the Cowboys' last two games. And now he's put them in pretty good shape right here with two minutes to go before the half. It's first and goal, Dallas. Dallas with the first and goal at the Los Angeles 2. The Rams lead 7-3. Running backs are Newhouse and Pearson. Pearson dives over the top, does not quite get there. A minute 55 left before the half, down about a minute 50 now. Don't forget to stick with us at the half for highlights of the first game. Just a second, I'll tell you what I was thinking about. This is the offensive setup that Tom Landry wants. He wanted all year long to have Pearson and Newhouse in there complimenting one another, and for the first time, really, he's got them. We'll have highlights of that Pittsburgh-Baltimore game. Andy Williams is going to drop by and visit with Phyllis and Irv and Brent. So stick around at the half. Again, it's Pearson. Again, he doesn't make it. Tremendous defensive charge. Nothing moved on the line of scrimmage. People just went inside out one another. Watch it. You're down right on the line of scrimmage with them. Watch the line of scrimmage. People just exchanged positions, that's all. Solid play by Jim Youngblood. And so it's third down, and still about a half yard to go. Third and goal, and Dallas has called a timeout. Freddie Dreyer is talking to the defensive Rams. On uh, the weekend of January the 8th and the 9th, CBS Sports will present the final rounds of the Phoenix Open, where a strong field of superstars will be shooting for the $40,000 first prize. That's the Phoenix Open, Saturday, January the 8th, and Sunday, January the 9th. Well, the pros love to play out there because the fairways are a little bit dry, and you can just hit it all day, right? It just keeps rolling and rolling. <laughs> As long as it's straight. Be speaking of people talking about Landry, 10 years of the 11, of the last 11, he's been in a playoff situation. And you're right, he is wearing glasses for the first time. That makes me feel good. That guy next to him has done a heck of a job, and he was a heck of a player, too. Dan Reeves. Look at him looking over Landry's shoulder. <laughs> Roger Starback has got his message. Good time for a rollout, wouldn't you think? It's a good time to get a touchdown and don't come up short just before halftime. Saw Kenny Stabler roll into the end zone with that clutch touchdown yesterday. Roger asked for quiet. Cleveland, and he's in. He scored twice. the touchdown play again. A handoff to Scott Laidlaw, the Stanford grad, and a lot of times the Cowboys draft on intelligence. And I'll tell you, Laidlaw is just a Walt Garrison. It's about the best way to explain him. He does it all pretty darn well, including score. That was his fourth TD rushing this year. And you're right, he did score twice. Charlie, Charlie Waters to hold. A friend Herrera. Good. Look at the touchdown again. Okay, there's Fitzgerald's move. Good block on Merlin Olsen, the double, of course. It's a wedge-blocking situation. 35 just got a little bit of daylight. A leaping spike. That's why he stayed on his feet. He wanted to make sure he was upright when he spiked it. 10-7 to seven the score now. The Rams will take it over with 48 seconds remaining in the first half. Our special team's important. Mike Ditka's team blocked that punt that set this up. And they've gotten safeties in two out of the last three games the Cowboys have by 
blocking punts. It all really pays off, doesn't it? It sure does, and they make it pay. It seems like they take advantage of things like that, as you would expect a class team to do. Cullen Bryant, number 32, beat the Rams, Herrera, set to kick off. Rams have all three of their timeouts remaining, by the way. of Tom Gurdeen. He took it at the 10 and heads upfield. Tackle for the Cowboys was made by Mike Hegman, one of their backup linebackers, and they have a lot of them. Ram season opens today, and the Cowboys will bag their limit, they say. One thing we do have to bring up uh, regarding young Pat Hayden, he is a young quarterback. And against this kind of a sophisticated defense, perhaps in the last 41 seconds of a half, uh, he may not be able to wing it like a Billy Kilmer or a Jurgensen would have done or a Van Brocklin or somebody that has been there a long time. And maybe we'll be very careful. Maybe not. They have extra defensive backs and a three-man rush about to face Hayden. He just gets to Capoletti on the outside. Harvey Martin came out with the blocker. Aaron Kyle makes the tackle and the flag is down. Harvey Martin and Doug France had an exchange and Harvey might have ended up with the offensive ram tackles headgear, a face mask. I'm not sure. That's, there's Harvey talking about it, looking down. That's exactly what happened. Harvey doesn't necessarily agree. He knows he can only have one or two or three head slaps, but he didn't know he couldn't jerk the guy's head off. We'll get the word from Fred Silva. 79 defense, face mask, first down. Automatic first down for the Rams. Don't make him mad, though. 34 seconds left before the half. I wonder if the Rams will still try to run it out instead of throwing. Fires to the sideline on one hop in the direction of Jackson. Aaron Kyle with him, and so is Randy Hughes. See what happened to Harvey that last time. Well, play. Harvey's hot. He just got caught. Now, France and he are going to see each other a lot. There's the shove that the offensive tackles now use. Watch this. It's supposed to be a double play ball. That would have hit the runner in the back of the head. 29 seconds remaining before the half. Clock is stopped. That's the record on Hayden. McCutcheon had it and dropped it. Aaron Powell was with him, but this is incomplete. Mark McCutcheon Washington. had it. Well, Mark Washington didn't take any chances. He thought it might have been called a completion. What's a great play by Aaron Kyle, the rookie from Wyoming. Hayden throws a good pass here. This is really a very fine defensive play. Ball is really caught but stripped early. Look out. A double team on Harvey Martin. Watch it. Okay, the battle of Harvey and Martin against Big Doug France. And Tom Mack. <laughs> a bunch of shots. Third down now. Good protection this time. Underthrown intended for Capoletti incomplete. Hayden is hot at himself because he really didn't throw it that time. He just sort of forced it, didn't cut it loose. A little bit of blood on that elbow. He protected time. him pretty well, though. It gets a pretty good rush. On this artificial turf, that happens often. You get almost like a mat burn. Rusty Jackson deep. Got this one off. Butch Johnson coming over to field it, and it's out of bounds. So the Cowboys will take it over with two timeouts left and 13 seconds left before the half. How many congressmen were on the take from a Korean businessman? Could be a scandal as big as Watergate. Watch this and other stories on 60 Minutes, which tonight only comes to you at 10 o'clock, 9 Central Time. That's only tonight.
for that time period. Eight to five, Dan Rather is watching this game. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to stay with us at half, at the halftime. We'll show you highlights of today's game between Baltimore and Pittsburgh. And Starbuck is just going to run it out. Andy Williams is going to join Brent and Phyllis and Irv, and I know you want to see that, too, and so do I. There they are, getting all set, and Andy's already there. Old Lonely Street. Dallas 10, Los Angeles 7. And the NFC Divisional Playoffs. Uh, two teams head for the locker room. Led by Pat Hayden, the Rams go one direction, and the Cowboys go in for their visit to Tom Landry. It was down. The field goal was good. And roughing the kicker, which would come back out on the next kickoff. Let's watch that. The field goal was good. Dempsey's kick ties the score, but watch this. And he kept it firm. That's the secret, he says. Cliff Harris, Harris ran into him. Ron Jaworski was the quarterback up. Protesting. He was the holder. And the discuss discussion still goes on. Captain Merlin Olson. Captain Tom Mack talking. Does that bother you as a kicker uh, for the next one that you've been roughed? Uh, Dempsey, like you say, is a veteran, but do you think about having the leg up and having somebody run through you? If you do, you won't be very successful. Running into the kicker. First down. Oh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Rams will go for seven and not take the three that's already on the board. It'll be a first down Los Angeles. They had the field goal. They had the score tied. But roughing the kicker gave them that first down. They've also got a lot of nerve. If they don't get anything now, it would be a tremendous second guessing item, wouldn't it? First and goal, the ball at the three. Pat Hayden comes back in. Don't forget 60 minutes. Will be seen this evening and this evening only at 10 o'clock here on CBS. That's Eastern time. Central. First and goal ran. Hayden's going to sprint out. And try to do it himself. He doesn't get there. Bob Bob Brunig, number 53, made the initial contact. Boy, and Leroy Jordan had a great shot. And number 55 is really teed off at himself. Watch this. Quarterback keeps it, rolls inside. Pretty good action as he cuts back. And you saw Leroy go by. Brunick makes the stop. He got a couple, and it's second and goal now for the Rams. Gapoletti. Jesse indicates touchdown, but the officials don't. They got to unstack and stop the clock for a second. Gapoletti's only scored one touchdown rushing, which would seem strange for the fullback in this formation. You're looking right by the sideline stakes and everything, friends. Did he get there? Who in the heck knows? 61, Rich Saul. The Ram offensive center is down in the end zone. Out of your picture right now on the left side. Start back in July, you've got to accumulate a few pizza elbows and things like that from normal wear and tear. And you're right, the Ram offensive center is creaking right now. We'll return to Texas Stadium after this word from your local station. $25,000 is a demand or a bomb will go off in a crowded department store. A case for Kojak tonight on CBS. About a half yard away from a touchdown as you look. An offensive center, Rich Saul, shaken up on that last play. Joff Reese, the rookie from Washington State, will be in there to make the snap. A very important one on third and goal. Third and less than one. Cowboys lead 10-7. That might be about to change. McCutcheon. And again, the Ram players indicate touchdown, and now the officials do too. The Cowboys are saying, we've got the football. McCutcheon scored, however. And the Rams have the lead. The great, the great thing by the official call was that they waited until they made sure, too. And I like the official that says, this is close. Let's take a look at it. And they did. Let's look down the line at it. Leroy Jordan really upset. Here it is. All right, you make the call at home. It looked good from here. 
And now the lunge forward. And nobody had blown the whistle. Don't forget that. So many bodies, it's hard to tell. Now we'll go from behind Dempsey. Scores Rams 13, Cowboys 10. Kick is right down the heart. And it's 14-10 Los Angeles. We have 14 minutes and 11 seconds still left to play. And this last few minutes is going to be super. 14-10 Los Angeles. The Rams scoring drive. 11 plays, 39 yards. And Tom Dempsey now set to kick off. And we'll show that uh, last little play in just a moment because it was very, very, very close for the touchdown. Dempsey set to kick and Jensen and Johnson deep. Good kick by Dempsey. It'll be Jim Jensen, the big rookie. And Butch Johnson runs over and says, stay in the end zone. That was a high kick. Here's the touchdown play again. Now, it is a game of inches and two excellent teams. And I'm telling you, this is a close decision. Talk about your elections and everything else. Second effort, he gets his feet back down. And now the lunge sort of halfway sideways. And the officials thought he crossed the line somewhere in there now. It's a lot of humanity, isn't it? All tied together. Just over 14 minutes left to play. Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. The Rams lead the Cowboys 14 to 10. The throw is outside for Golden Richards. Starbuck under a terrific rush by Jack Youngblood. Had a throw before Richards was ready. Rod well, Perry was covering. And Golden was looking Rod Perry right in the eyes to get a read on it and didn't know the ball was coming. Roger threw that ball darn well and early enough to, to where Golden maybe should have looked for it. It'll be second and ten. Five turnovers and they've all been in the second half. Dahlbach again struggling a little bit. He had a tough day against Washington last week and it hasn't been all that good today. Youngblood again almost wrapped him up and finally down he goes in the hands of Larry Brooks. Oh. Strong rush by Youngblood. You can get away from some of them, but you can't get away from number 90. Watch him go to the fabric to make sure of tackling a quarterback that is like a weasel. I'm telling you, watch him get rid of Youngblood. Okay, there's one when I've got to mark off. And now the jersey pads and Roger take a test. Third and long situation now. Ball way back on the 10-yard line. And we get our look at the shotgun. 20 yards to go for the first down. It'll be a four-man rush by the Rams. Well, back this time with all kinds of time. Pearson gave him a little room. Nowhere near first down, however. Isaiah Robertson shoved him out of bounds, whirled him out of bounds. Watch the containment on Fred Dreyer by Ralph Neely. And it was containment both ways there's a lot of spinning and fooling around but not much pressure on Roger and most people were really covered up <laughs> Dry, dryer is just different <laughs> Danny White back deep for Dallas standing right on the goal line Bertelson and Cullen Bryant stand at the 40 of the Rams ready to receive this point and it's a dandy it'll be Bertelson signaling for the fair catch and the Rams will take it over at the 44. Flag goes down again on the far side of the field. Let's see what the violation might be. How fast did the Cowboys get down under the punt? Flipping. Flag was way on the opposite side of the field. It must have been one of the two guys who could go down under the punt early. I think they had to clip uh, Tommy Henderson because he's a darn fast getting down there. And he forced him into a, a real error now. It's a long way to go. Now, a lot of time left for both teams. Number 39, clipping. First down. Number 39 is Rod Phillips, a backup running back who is not going to be a running back backup man always. He's start, pretty good. Boy, he can start for a lot of football teams. First and ten with a 
Los Angeles Rams. Tom Landry looking on and obviously concerned now. That's McCutcheon straight ahead behind the blocks of Mack. Keep in mind that the Rams are a tremendously prolific scoring team in the fourth period. The final period of play, they really get it together and know what will work and what won't. And they are tough in the fourth quarter. Ed Jones and Jethro Pugh made the stop on the last play. It'll be second down Los Angeles and Pat Hayden has the signal from the sideline. The wishes of Chuck Knox and what he wants run. McCutcheon. Leroy Jordan around his leg. Good hole open up too. Good trap blocking on, Lair on Cole. But a great recovery by the middle linebacker. And as you know, the middle linebacker should make these tackles. But look at this good hole opened up as Harvey Martin is handled. And Leroy's there. Good tackle here. Bob Klein got a good block. And a third down picture facing Pat Hayden in group right now. 12 minutes and 10 seconds left in this football game. It's Rams 14, Cowboys 10. Hayden on the sprint out, being chased and being harassed and taken down at the 30. Jones and Martin, the two defensive ends, and Cliff Harris. Too tall Jones really played Williams' block very well. Now watch the right part of your screen. Williams fires out. Too tall, 72 and 75 will go all the way over. And Hayden gets down very quickly. Rusty Jackson, number nine. Ram punter. Here comes Butch Johnson to handle at the 35. And tries to get back to the outside. They do their job well. Look at that conversion. As the Rams swarm around him. Kevin McLean was the first man to arrive on that scene. 14-10, Rams over Cowboys. The all-new CBS Sports Spectacular premieres Saturday, January 8th with Nadia Comaneci of Romania, winner of three gold medals at the Olympics in Montreal, competing for the first time since then against Nelly Kim of the Soviet Union and the Chinichi Cup from Japan. That's the premiere of the all-new CBS Sports Spectacular, Saturday, January 8th. 11.41 left to play. Los Angeles 14, Dallas 10. Cowboys must get on the board. They've got to get something out of this drive. A double tight end offense. Number 67, Pat Donovan lined up at tight end on the other side. Trying to set up a screen, and they do finally. It's Preston Pearson out past the 40-yard line. Brett Dreyer and Dave Elmendorf made the tackles. I don't know how they pulled it off. The Rams read it. The Rams were waiting for it. And Roger and Preston Pearson somehow changed the screen even as you were watching this. Watch. For the Rams say suddenly, aha, the old screen. Watch how they thread it back inside a little bit more than they would like to and do get something out of it. On second down, a forward handoff to Newhouse. And Newhouse near a first down. Jim Youngblood made the tackle. By the length of his 5 foot 10 inch body. Good play, good call. Watch the execution. Fitzgerald over on Merlin Olsen. And Newhouse makes that last lunge. A first and 10 for Dallas. Ten and a half minutes left to play at Irving, Texas. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. Playoff championship and an NFC championship at stake. Pearson gets close to midfield and they knock him back to about the 48. Dave Elmendorf. What a tackle. Jack Reynolds was with him too. I mean, I, we've seen some great defensive plays that don't look spectacular because they're done with such professionalism. That was an incredible tackle. Watch to the left of your screen. Watch number 42 come up. And we told you how difficult it is to zero in on Preston Pearson. Watch this tackle. The legs are together and the ankles are together. Perfect technique. 
second and eight. Starbuck drops. Rams have a blitz going. He had to throw it early. He got knocked down. And let's see how they pick up that blitz. Okay, Butch and Hacksaw Reynolds, Robertson and Reynolds, they do get picked up. I and Lawless are there. The guy on the outside, Fred Dreyer, was the guy who came unmolested and made Roger hurry. Let's take a look at what you just talked about, Pat. Top of your screen, you'll see Fred Dreyer stay with it, beat Neely, and force the quick throw, and also knock Roger down. Drew Pearson was the intended receiver. A third down play coming up now. Wade Law in the backfield. And he goes out. For Billy Joe Dupree. It is intercepted. Monty Jackson. Right. I believe stole it right out of B.J. Dupree's hands. Now this group has made a, a real science out of interceptions. They had 32 coming in. And, and Jackson had Billy 10. Joe Dupree, excuse me. Number 11 for Monty Jackson. Next Saturday on Christmas Day at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents an NBA shootout when Artis Gilmore leads the Chicago Bulls against the Kansas City Kings with Sam Lacey and Ron Boone. That's Chicago taking on Kansas City at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Christmas Day. The interception by Monty Jackson gives the Rams the football. Nine minutes and 34 seconds left to play. Los Angeles 14, Dallas 10. The winner to play Minnesota next week in the NFC Championship game here on CBS. McCutcheon slips. Jordan comes over to make sure, along with Cliff Harris. Well, Charlie Waters really played that beautifully. Almost in the cornerback position because he stayed in that place with the tight end, but he really strung it out. And actually, McCutcheon stumbled over his own blocker. So it'll bring up the second down situation and 10 yards still to go for the Rams. who will take a lot of time in the huddle. The quarterback is Pat Hayden. Has been all day. He gives to McCutcheon again. Charlie Waters came up and met that play in the hole like an extra linebacker. All Charlie Waters is looking at is France, number 77. When he blocks, 41 is coming up. Watch this. He knows he's free unless that has been a play pass. A quick huddle. And Hayden throws down the middle for Bob Klein. Cliff Harris made the hit. And I mean, Klein was open, had it, and just had it knocked loose by Cliff Harris. Klein is 235, and he and Harris met earlier. And Harris won it, and this time, Klein must think that 43 is chasing him around on purpose. Watch this. The quick play, the good throw, and excellent contact. The reason they do that quick huddle and quick play is so Dallas can't bring in those extra people on defense. Rusty Jackson deep to punt for Los Angeles. A high kick that Butch Johnson will field at the 20. He got back outside to the 32, like Tom Henderson might be down for the Cowboys. On Sunday, January the 2nd, CBS Sports brings NBA action with superstar Julius Irving, Dr. J, leading the Philadelphia 76ers against his former team, the New York Nets. And don't forget this year, our NBA coverage will be regionalized so that you'll get to see the local favorite team in action. That's Philadelphia against the New York Nets Sunday, January the 2nd. You ever watch Dr. J? I know you have. You're a basketball oh, gosh, fan, yeah. huh? Unbelievable things he does. That's Tom Henderson. It's down. Dr. Knight in the cowboy hat and the rest of the cowboy medical staff are looking on. You know who found him? Red Hickey. The former 49er head coach and all is the one that went down to Langston College and told Tom Landry there's a kid down there that is not schooled, doesn't know a lot of football technique yet, but he runs a 9-500, and he thinks he's a linebacker. <laughs> Turned out they were right, huh? He thinks correctly. Tom Landry checking his ready list. And believe me, that Dallas ready list is a very long and complicated one. Henderson's still down. And now up. There you go. 
That's one of the good sights in football to see a guy get up like that after he's been down for a length of time. I tell you, he's become a part of the Dallas scene, too. He doesn't go anywhere. He lives in Dallas. Rooms with two tall Jones, which scares him once in a while, he said, but he's I quite would a imagine. young person. <laughs> Says he's okay. Dallas first down at the 32. 8.20 left to play. Roger drops. And stays, hangs in the pocket, and overthrows. Intended for Butch Johnson. Pretty good rush put on him again by oh. the Ram front four. Brooks, Olsen, and Dreyer. Now you're looking at Youngblood, who tries to go inside and does on the tight end, Dupree, who stays in, and Nye. But the trio show up from the other side. There is Thomas Henderson. Like a problem with his left ankle. If the last series was crucial for Starbucks Cowboys, this one is even more so. 8.15 left. And plane tickets to Minneapolis are just home. Second down situation for Dallas. Back to Newhouse. That's sort of a surprise call. I think everybody in the stands thought Roger was going to pass, except maybe some of the Ram defenders. Monty Jackson made the stop. Watch it develop. Okay, let's take a look and just over defense, Olsen over the middle. Dreyer having his problems. Newhouse really was stuck hard, but held on to that ball. He doesn't fumble very much. Time left in the season for one of these teams. It's sudden death. We're not in overtime, but it's still sudden death right now. Seven and a half minutes left to play as the shotgun has Staubach ready to throw and throwing. And low. Roger is down underneath Youngblood. Who helps him up? It's hard to throw that football when you're stretched out or running for your life. He made a quick release. It just didn't get there. And they're going to have to punt. A rather discouraged Roger Staubach coming over to the sideline as Danny White lines up deep for Dallas, number 11. Jim Bertelson, Cullen Bryant back for the Ram. Will he punt it? He, of course, can throw. He's taking his time. And now he punts. High. Bertelson, the fair catch signal, takes it. At the 32. Going to have some illegal men downfield too early under the punt if he held it too long. And the flags are down. They probably waited as long as they thought they should. But until that third of the ball takes place, only the two outside guys can go. 42 kicking team downfield refused. First and down. That is refused. That was the voice of Fred Silva, the referee. It's a first down. 40 up. Yes, 42 is Randy Hughes. Jack Youngblood put on a big rush in the last two series with a little gulp of oxygen. Ram football first and 10 at their own 33. They lead it 14 to 10. Hayden. Is going to throw. Harold Jackson is open. Tackled by Cliff Harris. But a first down, Los Angeles. Pretty gutsy call there. The tenth completion of an afternoon when anything could have turned the game upside down. And I'll tell you, the young man that's going to go back to England and study has learned his lessons pretty well right here in the States. Super call. Jackson came back to meet the ball, as you should. Got his first down, and the Rams got a little bit more breathing room. At the 49, where they put the ball down, first and 10. Capaletti protecting the ball. He's met by Harvey Martin and company. Larry Cole at the bottom of that pile, too. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but certainly not much more than that. Aiden looking over for the signal. And the back of his mind are the instructions that somebody probably said, Late in the game, the Cowboys will come for the football because they've got to get it. It's 6.20 on the clock, and it's going off. Right at midfield, second down. 6.10 left by the time this play will get underway. Aiden takes, and he's going to throw again. And looks deep. It's picked off by Waters. Charlie Waters with the interception. Still on his feet, and now he's down at the 43. 
Harold Jackson made the tackle, but the Cowboys, who desperately needed a break, got it in the person of Charlie Waters. Tom Landry said, come on. It was gamble time on defense, and Hayden gambled on offense. The clock was moving. He could have used up a lot of time. He looks down the middle and misread the defense. And number 41, who has really played incredibly coming down the stretch, when the offense faltered, the defense has become really nasty. Well, the Cowboys have it first and 10 at the 44. Five minutes, 57 seconds left to play. 14-10 Los Angeles. Starbuck gives to New House, and he got maybe a couple. Jack Youngblood again on the tackle. What another football. Running plays, of course, eat up that clock. 5.35 on the clock. There's Charlie Waters, who gave his team a chance. They are down by four with 5.25 now left to play on second and eight. Protection is good. Newhouse has the first down at the Ram 40. Jim Youngblood made the tackle, along with Dave Elmendorf. But remember, a field goal will not help. It's seven points, or pack it in. Hooks up, waits for it, and the least likely receiver becomes very, very important one. I wonder who the Vikings would rather play, Los Angeles or Dallas? They are sitting and watching up in Minnesota. We'll be there next week. The NFC Championship game on CBS. Starbuck asked for quiet. He gives to Pearson. And Pearson does well to get back to the line of scrimmage if he did. Larry Brooks was the first guy there. Four and a half minutes left. It's a touchdown or nothing. Man in motion. Watch this play. And remember, there will be no minor personal altercations now. You keep your cool now. You don't blow it for the entire team or for a city by a personal vendetta. We'll be under four minutes by the time this one gets underway. Second and 11. Passing situation coming. Don't those Ram defenders know it. Youngblood makes him step up, and he's going to take off. Stahlbach slides underneath Jack Reynolds and Jim Youngblood. Not enough for a first down, but close. What a run. Remember, he's 6'3", about 190 pounds, and a heck of an athlete, and he's bright. You don't go to Annapolis and not use the gray matter upstairs. You know, I think Tom, there's Tom Landry. One thing, he is dropping so deep, it's making it very difficult to pass protect. The ends have such good angles. Third and about two. Clock says 3.10 left to play. He looks outside Pearson, and down he goes. That's going to be incomplete. Boy, Merlin Olsen made a spin move inside, and if Roger hadn't been throwing the quick out, he wouldn't have gotten it off at all. Watch to the right center of your screen, 74. Go in and spin and be right there as Roger pulled the trigger. Here it is. How about this call here? Fourth down. About two. Whatever it is, that man has made up his mind. Just over three minutes left. 3.03. Fourth and two. And now a timeout. That's the first one they've used in the second half, so they still have two left. Boy, that could be vital. And is that cagey, though? This is the big play of the game, if you... Don't get the first down. You gotta figure this game's in trouble. It really is almost bigger than that. It's almost the play of the year as far as any future competition is concerned. Staubach has made his visit over to the sideline to talk to Dan Reeves and Landry. And they have checked upstairs. Ermal Allen and all the people. There's your story at the bottom of the picture the clock right now. 
Coming up on Christmas Day, CBS Sports presents a big basketball football doubleheader, tipping off at 12.30 Eastern time, with the Chicago Bulls taking on the Kansas City Kings, followed at 3 p.m. by the Fiesta Bowl, where Western Conference co-champion Wyoming, with their 8-3 record, takes on the Big 8 co-champion Oklahoma Sooners, 8-2-1, ranked number nine in the country. That's a Christmas present to you sports fans from CBS yeah, Sports. Billy Cunningham will be doing the color on that, the former How about that? basketball great. We'll welcome him to our broadcasting staff. Especially on Christmas Day. <laughs> what a way to begin, huh? And now they've made up their mind. Fourth and two with 3.03 left to play. Novak is going to throw. And he does. Knocked down by Isaiah Robertson. He was looking for Preston Pearson, and look at Isaiah. He's had a heck of a day. Number 58, with that great speed, got oh. those quick hands of his and knocked the ball down. Incredible thought, though, that you call timeout to come up with that play with a consensus from the entire Dallas Board of Strategy. It's a pass play on fourth and a long yard. The great speed of Butch Robertson. And so the Rams take over with 259 left in this game. They lead it 14 to 10. Hayden gives to McCutcheon. And McCutcheon struggles for four or five. Bob Bruning around his leg along with Bill Gregory. Did you see what he did that time? He gave up the chance to get a good bruised elbow by covering up the ball with both hands as he came down. Kutch knows that this is a very important carry. Each one is now. They're not thinking Minnesota yet. Watch this now. He has a chance to protect himself but gives up the chance and takes the elbow spike right on the tip just to make sure it's covered. What do you mean their timeout? He got about four. Two thirty-two left to play. And still a discussion going on. I heard somebody say, what do you mean their timeout? <laughs> Second and six. The Cowboys, I know, have used one of theirs. They called it before that fourth down play. And now we're set to go again. The referee starts the clock. Rams, of course, will go in a long count and take their time. Gaffey broke a couple and fell for about three. They won't run another play unless somebody calls a timeout before we hit the two-minute notification. Gregory making an outstanding play inside to stop that forward motion. A timeout is being charged to Dallas. And I'm still trying to figure that out. With two seconds to go before the two-minute warning, why would they call a timeout? Leroy Jordan over with Gene Stallings and Ernie Stotner. Is this Leroy Jordan's last two minutes and two seconds, huh? He said he was going to go away for about three months and decide what he wanted to do for the next 30 years. I tell you what, that it'll be in a team situation. You can't play football for as long as Leroy Jordan has after being with Bear Bryant at Alabama and not needing a team feeling around you. So whatever the endeavors are, he will be a, a heck of a guy to have in, a, in your organization. He's been a heck of a guy in the Cowboy organization. On the left there, back of him, number 54 is the guy who will probably take his place. Randy White. Obviously, the Cowboys, including Leroy, would like to have to have Pat Hayden put the ball up. Don't think he'll do that again. Third and three, with two minutes and two seconds left to play. The Cowboys have one timeout left. That's been confirmed now. The Rams have two. Back to McCutcheon, and he does not get the first down. They'll have to punt. And the clock, of course, will stop at the two-minute warning. Charlie Waters up on the outside, forced the blocker to string out a little bit, and again, 
McCutcheon fell over the blocker. So with one minute and 59 seconds left to play, the score is Los Angeles 14, Dallas 10. Fourth and one, Rusty Jackson to punt for the Rams, and the Cowboys are coming. They've blocked one punt already. And he hasn't kicked well since that time. Good snap this time. Here they come. We got another one. Blocked by Waters. And out of bounds at the 18. The second punt blocked by Charlie Waters. The stadium is shaking. Cowboys football at the Los Angeles 17. Watch it again. If they score and win this football game, number 41 has got to get this game ball. Charlie Waters, look at it again. From the left of your screen, the man from Clemson. And they'll chase it out of bounds at the 17, where Dallas takes over. The score, Los Angeles 14, Dallas 10. Less than two minutes left to play. Roger Starbuck to throw. In the corner intended for Butch Johnson. No, no, oh. incomplete. He did not get the feet down. Butch Jocks. Johnson at 6-3 runs a heck of a pattern. Watch Roger, who really guns it. He's got to throw it right on the outside line and hope Butch can get the feet down. The catch. One heck of a catch. One. Oh. Oh, so close. One foot was down. One was not. A great effort anyway. It'll be second and ten. Again, Starbuck goes back and fires. This one out of the reach. Up uh, Pearson, Isaiah Robertson was close. That was not a good pass. Roger went sidearm. He has thrown 35 times today. Three interceptions, 14 completions, and he only wants one somewhere over the double stripe. He's not alone. And it brings up a third down situation. The clock stopped with a minute and 42 seconds left to play. The Rams lead is four points, 14 to 10. Again, the quarterback drops the pass and fires for Pearson, overthrowing. Rod Perry back there on the coverage. And now it comes down to one more big play, and that's what the Ram players are saying in front of their bench, signaling to the defense, one more play. Roger really gunned that. Early in the game, he was tight, and he really aired that out. Tom Landry can't throw it. He has called the play. Cowboys look on and Tom paces up and down in front of the bench. Fourth and ten. A minute 37 left to play. Again, he drops. Dupree held on. I don't know if it's enough for a first down or not. It's going to be close. It is going to be awfully close. The Rams are saying it is not. The tackle was a vicious one on a very, very big receiver. And I don't know who made it or if Dallas made it. They're going to have to measure. That's how close this season is. And they're saying, get away. Give us room so we can. Talk about your game of inches. Here is the measurement. Move away, please. No. Oh. Billy Joe Dupree made a heck of a catch. But he was hit as soon as he caught it. That is Pat Hayden getting in, getting instructions. Tom Landry. He's a class operator. The expression never changed. Chuck Knox giving a cram session to a Rhodes Scholar. 
A minute 29 left in this football game. The Cowboys still have one timeout left. The Rams have two. They got the break they needed and couldn't score against that Ram defense. Lock won't start until they snap it. Gaffoletti. And let's see what the Cowboys do. They take their one timeout. Ram defense coming into this game allowed four touchdowns the last four games and the Cowboys have only scored once. They've done a heck of a job. Timeouts left. The first one's not important. The other one is. None for Dallas. Second down. Capoletti broke a couple of tackles and now down he goes. And he's complaining to the referee about something. Somebody took a late shot trying to get the ball. The Cowboys are coming over the top right now. There is no longer a tomorrow. The clock still runs. They might get one more offensive chance. It depends on how long the Rams take. I keep thinking about the second game of the season when Minnesota and the Rams played to a 10-all tie and went into sudden death and couldn't decide it then. There are 10 seconds, now nine left on that 30-second clock the time before they have to snap it. They almost ran it all the way down and Capoletti is stopped and they'll unstack. 40 seconds left. Clock still running. I think they'll try to punt or run another play. We had a situation like this in the Super Bowl at the end of the game last year. Now they will punt. They'll send in the punting team. My gosh. Rusty Jackson is facing the big play and he's had two punts blocked. Keep in mind on a change of possession. Clock is still running. Still running. Dallas might get one more offensive play. Five seconds. And now they have taken too much time. So the clock will stop with four seconds to go. How about the snap if you have to center it back to a punter in the end zone who's had two that were simply thuds. A lot of pressure. Young man from Mobile. That's where he lives now. Born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Rusty Jackson. Just want to see you put your hands out and take the ball and see if there's any nervousness or strain. Now the center is a rookie. Joff Reese to snap. And it's a good Jackson's going to concede a safety. Clock shows no time, and that is it. Pretty cagey play by number KG nine, who spiked it. He Let's ran go. to the corner of the end zone, and so that's the final score. The Rams 14, the Cowboys 12, and the Rams will go to Minnesota. There is Ram owner Carol Rosenblum. Very emotional, as you would figure. Behind him, Don Klosterman, the general manager. The Rams go to the championship. 14-12 over Dallas. The NFL today on CBS will continue right after this word from your local station. Victory celebration inside the winning locker room of the Los Angeles Rams, who finally have made it to the championship. Irv Cross is down there with the Rams. We'll be going down to Irv and some of the players on the You're very, very Rams long, and I can barely hear the you. The NFL today on CBS continues in just a moment. And right now, let's go down to that Los Angeles Ram locker room, and okay. here's Earl Cross. Right. You can hear it. The Los Angeles Rams winning 14-12, one of the most dramatic playoff games we've had this weekend. Are very happy, as you can well imagine. Coach Chuck Knox. Coach Knox. Coach Knox. Let's, let's turn around just for one second. I've got, I've got Coach Knox here with me. Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah, just, just for one second. Isaiah. Hey! Isaiah. Isaiah, one second. One second. All right, this is your game ball presentation. Isaiah Robertson. All offense. All the offense. Coach, Coach Knox. It was a total team effort, both offense and defense all the way. Is that right? There ain't no question about that's what you can tell by these guys. That's what it takes to win. And we came to Dallas to try and win a football game any way that we could. And first, our defense was outstanding, kept us in a football game. Those two block punches that we had hurt us. 
Well, I thought offensively that our offensive line did a good job, and we hit some things and got some things done when we had to. And I know a lot of people that would question taking points off the board. We took that field goal off the yeah. board, but we don't believe in old adage, uh, uh, cliches and that type of thing because uh, we wanted to go in there and get the score. We knew we needed it at seven. We, we came down here to win. We came down to win a football game. But, you know, all week long, people were referring to last year's game, 37-7, you lost in L.A. Was it a factor today or not? Well, Herb, like I said at the press conference yesterday, anytime you get beat, a man, you know, you have it in the back of your mind, you can't let it bother you or you'd be so preoccupied with it that it affects what you're doing. But we came down here with a positive attitude that we could come to Dallas if we played Ram football and we we're going to have a chance to win. But it's a tribute to these guys and my assistant coaches. They're the guys that, that did all the work. And I tell you what, I couldn't be prouder of a bunch of guys. We've had a lot of things that have happened to us this year and a lot of little problems here and there. But this gang has stuck together and they play together today. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you, Herb. We'll be back right after this message. All right, Jimmy the Greek says the favorites next week will be very slight, Minnesota and Pittsburgh. All right, right now let's go down to the field and Jack Whitaker. Thank you very much, Brent. A lot of people think defensive football is dull, but if you thought this was a dull football game, you weren't watching the same one we were. It's a shame that one team had to lose, and Dallas, of course, is very dejected, especially people like Leroy Jordan, who probably played his last game. But they're a young team, and they'll be back. For, uh, for Los Angeles, well, they have Minnesota ahead of them. And Minnesota is going to be a little different dish than the Dallas Cowboys were this afternoon. I know one thing for sure. The Los Angeles Rams offensive team ought to take the Los Angeles Rams defensive team out to dinner. Brent? All right, Jack, thank you very much. Phyllis, you had a quick final thought. I certainly did. Well, I, I, you know, all know I've been pulling for Dallas the whole season, but L.A. played a terrific game, and I wouldn't, I'd okay. love it all. For Jimmy the Greek and Phyllis George, Pat Summerall, and Tom Brookshire, this is Brent Musburger saying so long from Dallas, Texas, where the Dallas Cowboys have lost the NFC playoff game to Los Angeles 14-12. to 12.